Good afternoon, welcome. Thank you for coming back. And if you're new here, I'm Melissa. Today I wanted to do some more plant chores. I need to do some watering. I need to like water my moss poles, check my cabinet. This is like my midweek watering. I'm trying to get back on more of a routine schedule. I used to water over the weekend and it was like my main watering day. I might break out the silica and use that today as well. And those plants that I have at the kitchen, the pink princess and manjula, I kind of want to get those repotted. I like to get my water done first. I just like to add my, I just filter it. And then I like to add my um, pH down, my fertilizer and those drops for the water the um, stress coat i like to add all that in my water and just get it ready i have like an empty gallon jug of water and this is the silica that i bought i showed this in my latest video it's power si this is a monosilic acid and it's supposed to have like a pretty immediate effect. I'm using it as a foliar spray and silica is supposed to help with overall like stretching. Um, I hear that it helps with browning and then overall like plant health makes it more resistant to pest and disease and it has like macro micronutrients in this one. I bought a little mister like spray bottle here that I'm going to be using. So I was reading different things online about the dosing and some people were saying one mil per gallon and then I saw someone say where they were using just 0.5 mils per gallon and they saw like the same effects as using more of it. So I don't know how like true any of that is. I, I'm just like experimenting. I will definitely make a video around silica once I kind of experiment and learn more about it and everything but I feel like for today I just want to like I don't know, just mix it up and get started with it and just start using it to see if I notice any kind of effects, I guess. And I definitely wanna use it on, I think one or two Monstera albos, but I'm not gonna use it on all of my albos because I wanna see if it helps with certain albos compared to albos that I didn't use it on. I think that's the main plant that I want to test it on. And then I might test it on a couple moss poles uh, just to see if I notice any kind of difference like with new growth that comes in especially stretching if it helps with stretching that's going to uh, be so nice if I don't have such long internodal spacing you know so I think for the purpose of today I'm just going to use 0.5 mils per gallon oh, I just have to smell it I don't know if it has much of a smell it has a little bit of a smell Always add to a reservoir of clean water at every feeding during all stages of growth. It is very important to add Power SI before any other nutrient or booster to maximize the effect effectiveness. Mix 0.5 mils per gallon of water. So I'm only going to use 0.5 and this is a 1 ml syringe. Okay, so this is 0.5 here. I'm just going to mix this up. And then I'm just going to pour some in here. But I don't know like how much to spray, you know, like how much to use, but uh, we'll see. I'm going to find out. I'm just going to spray <laughs> Mist My Monster Alvos, a couple of them, and maybe a few other plants. And yeah, we'll go from there. So I have three albos here. I have this one that I restarted back in soil and some of these leaves were still like a browning from being like having all the rot and everything. You can see the browning on like the ends here and like the more white has a little bit of brown. But the newer leaves like this one was a new leaf in water and this was like a brand new leaf it just gave me. So it's just one vine, but it's kind of like restarting back. 
So I know it's not going to help with the old growth, just new growth that comes in, but I do want to use the silica on this one. This is another elbow that I had restarted. It gave me this new leaf a little while ago and it's currently working on another new leaf here. And then this one is a pretty like healthy looking one. Like there's no browning on the whites or anything like that. But I feel like I wanna test it out on these three to see if I notice any kind of difference. And then the elbows that I'm not testing it on, I'm not gonna test it on the one in pond. And then I do have others that are in soil. So these are the only three that I'm gonna use the silica on and just see how the new growth compares. So I'm thinking I'm just misting my plant leaves cause it's going to uptake the nutrients and stuff through the leaves. So I'm just gonna miss them. Again, I don't, know, I don't know how to really use this or how much of this to use. I don't know if I should spray the front or the backs. I'm not really sure. I don't know if I should be wearing gloves. If I should be getting this like on my skin. So I would say I'm probably just gonna do this once a week. I wanna do it on like plants that have multiples of, you know, so that I can compare maybe for the next month. And if I do notice positive changes, then I'll use it on more of my plants, maybe like all of my plants. It's definitely gonna be like an extra step in my watering routine if I have to mist all of my plants every week. So that is something to think about long-term. But if it's gonna benefit them, then it's totally worth it. I'm willing to, take this once a week and just like spray everyone down, you know? Um, who else do I wanna use this on? I feel like I wanna use it on some pink princesses because I have four of them currently and I feel like they uh, could use the silica for sure. And I can test it on like two of them. So for the pink princesses, I have two that are up top here. I have this one that's in soil, like my chunky mix, and this one as well. I have this one in my chunky mix, which I feel like could use the silica. This one's a little bit more sad, or it's been a little bit more sad. And then I have the one here in pond, which I feel like the one in pond looks the happiest. So I think I'm gonna pass using it on the one in pond. I feel like the one in the back is the happiest out of the ones in soil compared to these two. So let's use the silica on these two. This one's kind of further away from the grow light, so I feel like I could use it up here. So I'm just gonna spray. Again, I don't know like how much of this I should be using. Like that. Again, I don't know if that one's gonna burn. I'm just gonna let this air dry on my table here. What'd you see? <laughs> that is Jason the sun glare with the bottle. <laughs> You're so cute. So I'm thinking my philodendron glorious and splendid are a good like two plants to test it on. I'm just trying to decide which one to do it on because they're similar in a sense. I mean, I feel like the internodal spacing is kind of long on the splendid, but then I feel like I just chopped the glorious so maybe the glorious could benefit more from it, you know? I, I like the splendid more than the glorious, but in case something happens, we're just gonna test it on Glorious. It's probably not necessary to do the front and the back of the leaves. Oh, you can't even see. 
I'm just kind of spraying it on. I don't know if I need to spray like the inner node and the petiole, I'm not really sure. I would love to do Monster Adansonii, but I really want to hold off on that one for a couple weeks. These guys are getting huge. I am going to take a day and do more extensions. Let's do an Epipremnum and test it. So let's do Jessiana. I'm just going to start spraying. I would really like to compare those two phyllos because they're kind of growing at the same speed almost. I'm gonna go ahead and spray Sorderoy. Because I've gotten a little bit of yellowing recently, just a lot of the bottom leaves are dropping. Well, maybe only two. I think they're just the older leaves that are expiring. I like the mist on this. <laughs> okay. Oh, do you know who else I wanna test it on? I want to use it on this Milano Chrysum because this plant has given me so much trouble. Like it's been a challenge to grow this one. So why don't we spray Milano? Cause I feel like it would help this plant. I'm very curious. I'm gonna to start topping off my moss poles. I only have so many globes to go around, so I have to only water like a few of them at a time. I do need to get more watering globes. My golden is already getting such big leaves already. It seems to be climbing pretty fast, which is very exciting. I feel like this has only been on a pole for maybe three months at most. My Marble Queen is such a water hog. All right, so I just kind of have them, you know, draining. And the ones that don't have globes, like that one back there, and my Cebu Blue and my Jessiana. I'll wait until some are done and then I'll water those a little bit later. But I just kind of keep an eye on them and some drink up water faster. Some drink up water a little bit more slowly. I think it really just depends how much moss and stuff is actually packed in there. But like the Marble Queen, it drinks it up so fast. The water drains out of there so quickly and you can already see how dark it is up top compared to the lighter color. And since this is my like midweek watering, I'm not having it reach the soil. So I'll probably stop it about halfway. So once I notice the water has gotten to like halfway on the pole, I'll stop it. So my Ikea cabinet is another like plant area that I check twice a week because things tend to dry pretty quickly in here. So I like to top off all my moss cause they look dry and then my stratum. And some of the plants don't necessarily need water twice a week, but I just kind of eyeball them. But I can tell like all the props are completely dry. <laughs> so I just kind of, yeah, just fill them up. So 
some of my anthurium seedlings are starting to put out a new leaf. So that was like the first leaf and then some of them have like a second leaf coming in. This is the clary and the padato radiatum. I'm so excited for this one. This is my platinum philodendron. SP Columbia Silver is the other name for it. And it's finally pushing a new leaf. I got this plant when I got my Elsmerelda and it just struggled. It had rot and I had to completely reroot it. And it's taken a while to finally push growth. And it's still not like super rooted yet. You can tell it has a lot of roots in here. But I am gonna put this one in pond since it's a crawler and I tend to struggle with these ones. But I'm so excited to finally see a new leaf. I thought this plant was a goner. It's interesting, two of these Alocasia Friedet corms are growing in with green growth or mostly green which is kind of surprising. Like this was a variegated leaf, but this is a green leaf. And then I have one more down here that's kind of pushing in all green. And this was off like my highly variegated mother too. So it is interesting how some of them are growing in green. This is the white vein Watsiana, Watsiania that I got from the Green Escape. And it's pushing a little baby leaf. Look how cute. <laughs> I am super excited for this one. This is the pink poly. Uh, it's working on a new leaf in the middle right here. It hasn't like fully unfurled or anything yet. I was on Instagram and I got a DM from the Green Escape and uh, they reached out and I don't know if someone sent them my video, if one of you guys did or somebody from their customer service team saw my video and um, they were just so nice. They said, you know, they apologized for the quality of this corm and um, they just basically said, we're gonna refund you the cost of it and I'm, and it just, I don't know, I just felt like, like I'm happy with it. I mean, I'm happy that it's healthy, but I mean, yeah, do I wish the variegation was better? But I just felt like that's so nice for them to reach out and refund me the cost of this plant because it was like 50 bucks. So they're going to refund me and I'm not sure like who, who I talk to, I guess who owns the Green Escape Instagram, but I don't know if it's like the owner because they said they had, um, you know, like customer service is like their top priority and they're just really appreciative of their customers and how they're able to do that and have like so many employees and everything. And I just thought that was so nice. They didn't have to do that. And I'm gonna return the favor and just buy more plants from them. <laughs> so I'll probably uh, make a new purchase and if I do, you guys will know. This one here is getting ready to push a new growth right there. This is the dark form. My stratum gets really dry in my cabinet, so I really have to like pretty much fill it all the way up to the top and it will usually last me a good four or five days. Here's some of my seedlings. I know some of you guys got one of my seedlings, but they're pushing some new leaves. Look how cute. These are completely dry. Like that leaf there is so pretty coming in. I love that like burnt orange color.
So yeah, it'll just soak up the rest of that in here. So my cabinet's pretty much done. I have some in soil that don't need a water yet and the ones in pond don't need watered yet. And then I have a new leaf coming in on my Esmeralda as well as its first implow. And I have a new leaf coming in on my Clary here. I think Clary Nervium leaves are so pretty. I did end up trying to pollinate the second inflow. Um, I had frozen Podato radiatum pollen, so that one I did cross uh, and it was successful. So I just went ahead and crossed the second inflow. So hopefully I didn't just stress this plant out, but it seems really happy. And yeah, I'm excited for that new leaf here. I have my gloriosums I need to do. I have them together right here. I need to do those in pond soon. And this one, like I said, took a bit of a hit, but I do see some new growth there in the middle. So I wanna finish up kind of watering my poles and getting them more like watered. I don't have to do anything with any of these plants over here because I just watered them all and my pond should be fine because I just like filled them and cleaned them pretty good. And the only other thing that I think that I would need to do is just the poles over here, just moisten them a bit with my water bottle. It's the thickly one, so I just do a quick little moisten. And that's really it. So today's Wednesday, so I'll come in here Saturday slash Sunday and like water my poles again. And at that point, like pretty much a lot of my plants in here will need a water at that time. So that's kind of the plan. I have a few stratum cups like on that shelf that I'll top off, but usually the ones in my cabinet are the ones that dry out the quickest. So yeah, I will uh, finish up in here and I'll keep you updated with the silica too. I'm gonna put those back away. And then I'm gonna get my soil mix and meet you probably in my dining area and we'll repot those pink princesses and menjulas real quick and then we'll kind of call it for this video. I am back. We are going to quickly repot these. Oh, I need to get my bucket. So I'm gonna do the Manjula first. I got these from Lowe's. They were $7.98 a piece and I couldn't pass them up. I haven't done anything with these since I bought them. I haven't even watered them and there's some like crispy leaves. I just tend to sit and forget about new plants and I didn't even do like a pest check, um, but I'm completely removing all the soil and I'm gonna pot them into a fresh mix. I'm probably gonna separate these out into maybe four pots and then I'm gonna just grow them out and then I'll have some to like propagate, you know, for the shop. But I saw these and I couldn't pass them up. Manjula tend to grow a little bit slower for me too. But I feel like lately plants that I've gotten from the big box store, whether, whether or not they were um, healthy plants or they don't look like they have pests, I feel like I've had a bad run lately with like possible pests. This here was like rotted. There's no note on that one. These are definitely just a bunch of mid cuts. You can see on that one, they're just all like mid cuts. Yeah, I want to get rid of all the dirt, rinse the plant off with my soap mixture, and then pot them into fresh soil. What the heck? This doesn't even have a node either. There's no auxiliary bud. Are they really planting cuttings in here with no way for the plant to grow? That's not cool. Like here's one that has a growth point, you see? That there. Okay, so there's one plant that's salvageable. I feel like this happens sometimes though, when you get plants, they just pot up like all these cuttings and then nothing grows. Not sure what is it growing off of this one. Do you see that? That is so weird. I'm 
I'm kind of bummed that these are all just like mid cuttings with like hardly any growth. This is the new growth here from the original mid cut. Same with that one. I feel like this one doesn't even have a growth point, nor this one. I don't know, I feel like these don't even have any auxiliary buds and that is a beautiful leaf. I don't know, there's something like right here, but I don't know what to make of that. I don't know, those are questionable. So yeah, that's weird. Let me see how many are actually growing out of this one. Here we go again, just cuttings with no growth points. Here's one that's rotted, nothing on that one. Here's another like rooted list node. There's like a wet stick, there's no roots and there's something on the end. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it's like trying to push new growth maybe. That is questionable. Ooh, that's a pretty growth there. That's pretty. I have about 14 cuttings that have like growth and then I have two wet sticks and probably one, two, three, five of these that I'm not sure are gonna grow. So I guess that's not too bad um, from what I got out of those two. So I'm gonna rinse these, rinse the roots and the leaves and I'm gonna spray them with my Castile soap mixture and then we'll pop these up and then do the Pink Princess. All right, while the manjula is soaking, I'm gonna go ahead and just separate these pink princesses. I have this one and then this one. And a lot of the growth kind of yellowed and stuff already. And only one of these plants is variegated in this one, but it's so beautiful. So that's why I got that one. So the other one um, is just like a burgundy. Okay, let's get rid of this. Soil, just so much extra soil. Look at that. <laughs> it just all comes off. So much extra. Definitely not necessary. This feels very wet. That's probably why I'm having all this yellowing. Look how pretty that one is. And then, yeah, this one definitely has some good color too. This leaf is kind of like not happy though. I'm gonna go ahead and chuck that one. I'm gonna rinse these over the sink too. So there's two of them. Oh, 
a fungus gnat. This one you see there's no pink at all, not on any of the leaves. So I'm not gonna be saving this. This is the one that I wanted because this one is absolutely stunning. Look at that. Especially these three leaves. Oh, it's so pretty. Looks like a caterpillar or something, a slug or something got that leaf and that leaf there, there's like chunks missing out of it and this one too. Wow, this one is very beautiful. All right, I'm going to rinse these the same way and spray them down with Castile soap and then I'll be back and we'll get these potted up. I am back. Okay, so I decided <laughs> since I got some new stuff that I would just test it out. I got my th three pink princesses all rinsed and then all the manjula cuttings. So I am gonna use some of the tree fern fiber that I just got just on one of the pink princesses and then I think one manjula and then the rest I'm gonna use my normal chunky mix for. And I'm also gonna be watering in with this Marful Soil Enhancer and uh, just use that to water in the soil after repotting and just see how they do. I'm hoping it kind of lessens like any transition shock from like being uprooted and having their roots messed with and all that. Someone said they add a small catful to their watering can and use it um, when they water their plants and they use it in place of fertilizer probably every other watering. <laughs> and someone else mentioned, um, let's see if I can find it. Okay, here it goes. They said that it's similar to other fermented kelp products such as Super Thrive, and they find it to be more effective than Super Thrive and sometimes it can help kickstart stubborn plants as well as replenish the soil. A couple people responded about um, the tree fern fiber. Someone mentioned uh, they mix theirs with chunky perlite um, for philodendrons and they love it. If you mix it with other amendments, it'll make the tree fern go a little further and they said that their plants absolutely love it. So I got a little bit of perlite. I might mix in just a little bit of perlite and just see how it goes with just those. And I have these pots here. I got these as a set of 30 on Amazon. And I think they're gonna be perfect because they don't have any side vent holes, but they have a lot on the bottom. And I love how they're like a good quality plastic pot. And I don't wanna go any higher than a four inch, even for the pink princesses, because the root system isn't as well developed yet to like pop up any higher. And I tend to have experience with root rot with philodendron pink princess. So I do want to downsize then upsize. I think the pink princess I wanna try in the tree fern fiber is this beautiful one here, cause I'm probably gonna keep this one. And then I'll probably grow these out to propagate in the future if the variegation turns out good. And I may eventually prop this one too, but since this one is like the prettier one <laughs> out of the bunch, I'm gonna use the tree fern for this one. I'm very curious to see how this philodendron likes it. Let's see. I'm just gonna mix some into my lid here. Oh, that does look a lot different. 
That's kind of the consistency of it compared to like cocoa core. And then I'm just gonna throw a little bit of perlite. that looks good. I feel so like aerated. So we're going to take a little bit of this down in here. That's the root system on that one. It's pretty good. I'm so used to mixing charcoal and everything else in my mix, so this definitely is different. I love how fluffy it is. going to add a little acrylic stake into here just to help support it because it's a little bit wobbly. I really like the look of that. It looks good. <laughs> and let's see. The rest of this we're going to use. I'm going to have to add a little bit more, I think, of the tree fern. We're going to do our manjula, one of those in here. I kind of mixed up all the cuttings now, so now I'm not sure which one, which ones didn't have nose or at least which ones I think. I'm going to take some of the prettier cuttings to do in it. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm going to do five cuttings. So that there is so pretty, especially this one. This is my favorite leaf. That is gorgeous. It's definitely interesting. I mean, I think I'm really gonna like it. It just, I don't know how to describe it. It's just so fluffy. And I thought Cocoa Core was fluffy, but this is like extremely fluffy. Fluffy in a good way. I feel like it just is gonna be really aerated. And I love like super aerated mixes like this. And I only have like a little bit of fine perlite in here and it's already, I can tell it's super aerated. I'm gonna have to rinse these leaves off a little bit. So these two are in our tree fern fiber, one manjula and the pink princess. And now we are using my chunky cocoa core mix.
Wow, it's just completely, a completely different mix. Like the feeling of it. My mix is definitely super aerated, so this dries extremely, extremely quickly. I sort of prefer my mixes to dry out more quickly so I can water more heavily and more frequently. <laughs> like if I water and the substrate feels wet and it's this aerated, I feel like I'm not gonna risk overwatering versus if it was more dense and then I feel like I'm more of a heavy hand with water sometimes. But lately I feel like I've done more underwatering. What happened to the leaf on this one? I don't remember another leaf breaking off. All right, let's see. One. Three. Okay, we have one, two with growth. And some of these were questionable. I don't know what they were gonna do. I don't just, I don't see where the growth is. I'm gonna pot this one up because I feel like that one's gonna grow and that's such a pretty leaf. And then these two, so we're gonna do these four together and just see what happens with those. And these two little wet stick things, I'm gonna throw one down into here and one down into here. So with the soil enhancer, I may need to get more water. So it's 50 mils, I think it was 50 mils in a liter of this, cause it was like 6.4 ounces into a gallon of water. So this watering can here that I use is exactly a liter. And a fourth a cup here says 59 mils. So I'm gonna use roughly fourth a cup into the liter of water. Oh, that is pungent. Oh yeah, it's got a bit of a smell to it. It looks fishy for sure. <laughs> it smells fishy. Okay, we're going to pour this into here. All right, who wants watered first? Trying to tell how this tree fern fiber is when I go to water it. 
I feel like it's it's definitely more dense than my mix, just because I have so much chunky stuff in my mix. I feel like this might be good for plants that want a little bit more water consistency, like alocasia. I can see this being really good for them. I like how it waters thoroughly. Because sometimes my mix, it's, it doesn't get like fully saturated all the way in a sense because it's so chunky, but I felt like this moistened all the way through. So I feel like this uh, hydrates the roots all the way through. Whereas this, I might have like chunky parts that didn't get water because this already feels lighter like my mix. I can already just feel the difference. I actually might leave these all in this tray and set these in my plant room on my table until I get that other shelf set up. They're just gonna bottom water the little juices up in there. I'm just gonna let these soak in the remaining water. I have a little bit left. Let's go ahead and just pour it in here. <sighs> smells very fishy though. <laughs> So yeah, I'm excited though to see how these do since I repotted them and everything. I'm excited to see how they transition and how, like if they experience any shock. Usually I feel like pothos, I feel like I rarely get a pothos to shock, but philodendron can definitely shock. I'm super excited for these. I'm glad I got to test out the silica and I'm glad I got to test out the uh, enhancer and the tree fern fiber. So I'm very happy that I did this today. <laughs> Here is another little look at everyone. It looks so pretty now. And this is the tree fern fiber again, kind of up close. Compared to like my chunky mix here. Oh my gosh, this smells like fish so bad. <laughs> Look how beautiful that looks. So thank you so much for watching and all of your suggestions. I really hope you enjoyed and I can't wait to update you on these. So I appreciate you guys and I will talk to you again here very soon.